roll there <laughs> in the middle. I would have a coat on, only... Uh, I'll take it. You look better that way. No, I... Well, I was wearing the same coat I wore in December when I was here, and John McDonald said, I thought you were doing pretty good out in California. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he thinks I should go out and buy another coat every day, I guess. I don't know. Well, I've got two. Don't ever take more than a quarter turn. Look at you got well, a little roll there. A little roll? It's just terrible. I, I put it up there where it belongs. It's pretty nice, isn't it? <laughs> Sit so still, I give the weather. We have weather here. You know. oh, oh, yeah, I noticed it when I came in this morning. Want to read it? Yes, uh, let's, where do you start? Up there or here? Right here. Cloudy periods and a chance of snow flurries today, tonight, and they don't have the camera on me to do this. Yeah. And Tuesday, high today near 20, low tonight near 10, and high Tuesday in the mid-20s. Westerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour, gusty at times, probability of snow, 30% today, 50% tonight, and 30% again Tuesday. Cold air will remain in the lower lake regions through tonight with some moderation beginning Tuesday. <laughs> the temperature, is this right now? Right. Temperature. No, 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 not yet. Hmm? No, no, you watch. The dials will come up here in just a second. Mm -hmm. Winds, wind velocity. The wind, wind velocity <laughs> is uh, 10, 11, 12. Thirteen, about thirteen and a half, I guess. It looks Six. like... Six! Oh, oh, it's going up the other way. Six! <laughs> I see. And the weather can't make up... The wind direction can't make up its mind, apparently. Mm. It's going uh, west, oh, there, southwest, west. Variable. Oh, variable. Right. Is that what you say? Yeah, when it's doing that. Oh, we never had those when we were here. We were a poor station. <laughs> uh, the... Uh, Still uh, poor. The, the barometric reading, <laughs> the barometric pressure is 32, uh, 30, 28? 30.10. 30.10. 30. That's right, folks. And the uh, next dial, it's time for lunch. <laughs> the humidity is 54. Right, right. I got that one. The humidity is 54, and the temperature at the moment is the 10 degrees in, what do they say, downtown Rochester? Downtown. Or at the airport, out there where the airplanes go up and down. <coughs> How's that? Good. We return you now to our studios, and Eddie Meath with his fat guest. <laughs> well? Hey, I missed the show, Arnie, last week. I understand <laughs> you were a smash. I noticed that when I was watching it, Ed. <laughs> it was... <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people have been real nice in the things they've said about the performance. Uh, and I You were a doctor <clears throat> that was hired by the company? Yes, from an organization called the Second Chance, mm. where people needed a second chance to sort of straighten themselves out. They had various problems. My problem was a drinking one, and uh, Arnie's wife is a member of the Second Chance organization. And uh, ask Ar real, knowing that the... Uh, that the doctor, the doctor who had been at the company for years, was going to retire, asked Arnie to ask his boss to let <laughs> the, them send someone over from the Second Chance organization. And Arnie talked to his boss, and over the protests of his immediate boss, who wanted his brother-in-law in there, the head man says, okay, we'll give this man a chance from Second Chance. And I fell off the wagon a couple of times during the show, I guess, <laughs> uh, during the, uh, the television broadcast. They, how it came about was I was on the Carson show, as you know, and uh, and the producers of the show, Duke Vincent and Bruce Johnson, I don't know why they always mention their names when they say the producers and then mention their names, like I might, might know them real well or something, but I don't. Um, they saw it, and they called me into, the studio, into their office at 20th Century and asked me, they said, we would like to write a program, a show, an episode on Arnie of your uh, character. We'd like to know when you will do it, if you will do it, and when you will do it. And uh, I said, I want to do it right now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was such a great opportunity for me. I, I, uh, th then you have to try to act like, well, let me see, can I do this, or will I be too busy? You know, and I wasn't busy at all. <laughs> 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 so they, uh, they wrote it, I, and I, I met the writers, and uh, they wanted to get an idea of the character, and, and so uh, I thought they did a real good job in writing it. Very good. Boy, you can act smashed better than any person I ever saw. Really? Well, I had a lot of experience when I was <laughs> <laughs> when I was here with you, <laughs> didn't we? Yeah, but I, I can't act that way. Oh, well. And I had experience, too, with you. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I just, I don't know, it came about quite by accident. Uh, somebody asked me one night if I could stand up before a group of people some one day. I said, can you stand up before a group of people for 15 minutes or so and, and tell them stories or something and make them laugh? I said, I, I suppose. And uh, he got me this job for the uh, City of Hope annual dinner at the International Hotel in Los Angeles. And I, uh, I was standing, being introduced, and uh, I remembered my dad back home in Louisville, how well he could tell a story portraying one who was inebriated. And uh, I, I just thought to myself, I, I wonder what it would be like if I would go out on the floor, pretend that I'm tight, but then try to act like I'm not and not quite be able to mm. uh, hide it, see. And it just went over so well, I just worked real hard and, and uh, got my routine, got a routine, and uh, it's just been going well ever since. Give I us a story when you're smashed. Uh, well, I'm gonna do that tonight, and maybe somebody will listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> you have thousands of stories. Well, yes, I have thousands of stories, but uh, you can this, do you reach the office? <laughs> I mean, does this program go as far as yeah, the office? Oh, yeah. oh well, they might. Uh, the ones, the, what kinds of stories I know, you know. <laughs> but uh, it's a real nice. I, it, it's amazing what, uh, uh, for instance, I've often wondered, Jack Benny has always been my favorite comedian. In radio, I thought there was none like him. And, uh, and I often wondered while I was out there, I've, I've met so many of the big names in the uh, business. I wonder if I'm ever going to get a chance to meet Jack Benny. Well, uh, not too long ago, about six weeks ago, I was contacted by uh, a man by the name of Ackerman, the producer of uh, Bewitched, and he said he was running the Television Academy dinner honoring Carol Burnett. And uh, wondered if I could, uh, they, he understood that I did an act, this that, and so on, so and wondered if I would come down. So they arranged it. Terry and I went there for the dinner, and oh boy, we were really rubbing elbows with the with the big ones. Everywhere you turn, we met Jim, people like Jimmy Stewart, Lucille Ball, and they both had seen me on the Car Carson show and had real nice things to say about it. And and uh, like, can you imagine me sitting at a table having dinner, looking around, trying not, you know, to, <laughs> and seeing all these stars, and finally somebody tapped me on the shoulder. It was Gary Morton, Lucille Ball's husband, said Foster. Uh, I've known him for some time, but mm. I'd never met Lucille, and uh, and he said, uh, Foster, Lucy would like to meet you. Can you imagine that? So I said, whoa, where, where is she? <laughs> and he, she was right behind us, and I went over, and I, oh, she was just so nice, so wonderful. And uh, said, I certainly hope we get to uh, work together before too long. And I started to say, well, you hand me the script, and I'll be in the studio in the morning. You see? <laughs> and uh, then uh, Jack Benny was the master of ceremonies for the show. And uh, he introduced me, and I met him that night, and it was quite a thrill. Great. And everything. Uh, they introduced me as uh, uh, one of her old high school teachers, you know. And what did you do? <laughs> well, I just, I was, uh, Moss, Ross, Ross, uh, a big, I never can think of this man's name, he's a big producer, and he was sitting at Carol's table. And, uh, Joe Hamilton, uh, Carol's husband, told me the other day in La Costa, he said, uh, Ross said, uh, oh my God, oh good Lord, L this poor guy, and he felt so sorry for me because it, it was obvious that I'd been at, had too many cocktails previously, you know, and, and he thought for a long time that I was really blamed. <laughs> <clears throat> when, I, when I do this character, I, I'm not doing what any actor can do or anybody can do, whether actor or not. And that is act drunk. I'm not acting drunk. I just, uh, I'm just acting like I'm not, and I can't quite hide it. And because uh, I mean, I'm not, not a falling down, staggering, and all. I'm just slightly. Uh, my eyes. Everybody says that my eyes become a little, a little bit. You know, like these do standing there at the bar, at the bar, and I develop a little hiccup, hiccup that gives me a ways and. Might weave just a little, just a very little bit, you know. And like I was saying to my wife the other night, we were sitting there talk, talking, you know, just husband and wife, wife talk. 
And uh, we got to talking about whether or not we each had been faith faithful to the other, you know, down through the year, years. And she said, uh, hun, and I said, Wh what? And she said, uh, I wrote a poem. I wrote a poem about that. I said, oh, did you? And she said, yeah, yeah you want to hear it? I said, yeah, because I really wanted to hear, hear it, you know. And she said, you say you've, all, you've always been faithful, that you've never cheated, cheated once. And yet there are times when I feel I may be an awful dunce. But you must know how I feel, my love, how I feel about you, however faith, faithful you've been to me, I've been as faithful to you. And how would you like to be married to a cheating broad like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll be back in just a moment right after this message from Weight Watchers. Oh. <laughs>